Hi, I'm Jatsy. You don't know me and that's okay. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're, we're going to do an intro to Protoflux, which is Resonite's in-game programming language. It might be a little bit more in-depth than some of the other intros that are out there, but let's face it, you want your avatars, you want them now. So I'm going to teach you guys how to set up simple gestures, like if I hide my whiskers, you know, simple gestures that you control with the buttons on your controllers. So let's go over some of the things that you're going to need. You're going to need your avatar all set up. We've already done that before. I've got videos out there, how to set up outfits, all that other stuff. You're going to need that set up. You're going to need a dev tip, which you should already know how to do by now. And you're going to need a protoflux tip. The protoflux tip is directly next to the dev tip in the inventory, uh, like the next one over. So once you have all those three things, I'm going to put you inside my head. We're going to get to work. Okay, so we have our Ameris avatar that we've been setting up throughout the other videos. We have our dev tip here, and we also have our protoflux tip. It looks like this. Kind of looks like a light bulb. So, uh, right now, we just have the default face on Ameris. She's not. You know, she, she's there, she's blinking, but she's not doing much else. We're gonna fix that. So, I'm gonna put her over here, and using the dev tip, we're gonna select her. We're gonna go up to her root. Where you put these slots really doesn't matter too much, um, but most people will put it under the centered root. So we're gonna create a new child. And, I find it handy just to have all the protoflux in one place, so I'm going to call this protoflux. All right, and we're going to go, actually, we're going to go back to the centered root. We're going to go to her face, because we're going to need blend shapes. And what we're going to do, let me pull her in close, what we're going to do is we're going to find blend shapes that, uh, when combined, make the face that we want when we do our, our button press. Um, so for this video, I'm just going to do simple, you know, eyes closed with a little smile. So let's take a look and see what we have. We have all these blend shapes here. Some of these you can see are already being driven. So these right here are being driven by our uh, Visemes, which is, I believe, in our head proxy. That's just so the mouth moves when we talk. Uh, we do have eye close left and eye close right. Uh, those are being handled by the eye manager to handle blinking, and we're actually going to do something about that towards the end. The the eye blinking could be different blend shapes. This is just how this one is set up. Um, so let's take a look at our blend shapes here. So we have, uh, let's see, what's eye doya do? That's not what we're looking for. Jeet does not what we're looking for. Joy. Okay. So joy, joy when we move this slider, we can see it kind of... Yeah, it gives us a good little happy, happy eye close for the smile. So, oh, drive that one forward, and then let's look at something to kind of make her smile a bit more. Let's go down to the mouth. Uh, let's see, smile. Well, the smile doesn't change a whole heck of a lot. We want to make this a little bit more dramatic. Sure. All right. It's nice and cheesy. We got big grin. We got closed eyes. We want to do that. We're going to put her off to the side and we're going to swap to our protoflux tip. We're going to open our context menu and you're going to see you have an option here that says browse nodes. This is the default node browser. I've heard it's subject to change. There's other node browsers out there. This is just the default one that we have. So the first problem that we need to solve is it has to be able to detect when someone is inside the avatar. And we're going to do that by going down to users. We're going to do get active user self. You can see when we double clicked it, the note is here. Just like it works with materials and everything else, just click somewhere else. And with a double click, we get this note, get active user self. And it's got this little box here. If we hover over that and hold down primary, you can see that we're pulling out a ribbon because this is going to be an input. We're going to set this off to the side. Now, it has to be able to detect what controllers you're using, whether you're using Index 5, Quest, whatever. Uh, we're going to do that under Devices. 
controllers and you have this whole list here all right so i myself am on a quest 2 that's connected with the pc link you can use alv or whatever but uh regardless i'm using touch controllers so you can select whatever one is appropriate for the type of controller that you're using with a double click we get this here which is a couple different inputs and all of the buttons for uh, the outputs of the controller we're gonna set that aside all right the last thing that we're gonna need for a very basic gesture system is gonna be a smooth lerp what a smooth lerp does is it allows uh, a value to smoothly transition from one to the other without a smooth lerp the transition is gonna happen instantaneously and it's not gonna look very natural uh, so we're gonna find smooth lerp under math interpolation value smooth lerp you can see we have a couple different options here now blend shapes run from zero to one you can overdrive them or underdrive them if you want but in general they run from zero to one which if you remember from previous videos that would mean that it's a decimal that means it's a float so we're going to grab value smooth lerp float and click into the sky now we can start to kind of build the basics of the gesture system and then we're going to have to come back over here and grab a couple things uh, after so i'm going to move this down here we're going to take get active user self we're going to take that input and just plug it in right and all we did by doing that if i cut that from that wire we have get active user self we just release it now they're connected so on this input, we're actually gonna drag this one out. So we're gonna hold down primary to pull the ribbon out, and then we're gonna hit secondary. This opens up chirality. What chirality does is it lets you decide if the left controller or the right controller is gonna be what handles this action that we're building here. Um, so I'm gonna leave it on the left. That's just what I'm used to. Again, you don't have to follow these step by step. This is just to get you started. Now, for me, I like to trigger uh, my little gesture by pulling down my left trigger. So I'm going to come down here to trigger. This is going to be the input. We're going to slap that onto our smooth lerp node. Now speed, if we pull this out, is going to be a flow input. This decides how quickly the transition happens. Uh, so play around with it, watch it happen when you're done, and see if you can find a value that you like. I typically will do eight. I've seen some people do six. It's really up to you. So we're gonna grab the inspector that's over here and we're gonna grab the blend shapes that we decided that we were gonna use for this gesture out of the inspector. And we decided that we were gonna use eye joy and mouth grin R. So let's go back up to eye joy. I'm gonna drive this back down to zero. I'm gonna grab where it says eye joy going to hit my context menu button and you're going to see I have two options here source and drive we're going to do drive because we want this system to tell this what to do right so we're going to take the output of the smooth lerp slap it onto value drive float and you can see ijoy is now purple it's now being driven by the system we're going to do the exact same thing with mouth grid r grab it context menu drive and put it down here and you can see that you can take as many as you want depending on the data type and drive all these at the same time so mouth grin r is purple it's now being driven and i joy is still purple it's still being driven by the system so great cool you got script in front of you uh, what do you what do you do with it you're gonna go back up to your protoflux slot and you know what we're gonna make another child just in case we decide to add more gestures down the line we're gonna change the name of this to smile right with your protoflux tip point at any node in the script and hold down secondary you saw there was that little white circle that came in and you can see this is now blue right this means that all of this script is now selected you're going to come over to the smile slot that we made while holding on to it. You're going to see that you have an option that says pack into smile. The code has disappeared and it now lives in here. 
Okay, so we've hopped back into the avatar and let's take a look at this in action. So we can see right here, I got the mirror. Hey, how you doing? I start to slowly pull the trigger. You can see the eyes close. <laughs> and don't mind what you're seeing here. That's just because the visine blend shape is, is kind of competing with the grin blend shape. So pick and choose and that kind of stuff. But you can see it works. Ah, uh, la, la, la. Right. Now, let's kind of take this up a little bit of a notch because you can see if I hold it down and we wait for it. I don't know if you saw that there, but I'm still I'm still blinking. Let me uh, let me zoom you in. Let me make sure you can see. Okay. So if I hold it down though, you can still see that I'm still blinking even with my eyes closed, and that's not supposed to be a thing, right? So let's hop back into me. I'll show you how to unpack, and we're gonna do a couple more things to fix this here. Okay. So I've hopped out of the avatar and back in Teacher Jatsy, and we're gonna fix that eye blinking issue, right? And that's a very easy fix. So to unpack Protoflux, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that slot that we packed it into, so in our case it was Smile, hold on to it, open your context menu, and you now see that you have an option to unpack. You're gonna click on that, boom, our code shows up again. Now, to fix the, uh, the issue, you can see, hair disappears that's uh, something I covered in short so <laughs> to fix the issue with the eyes still blinking even when the eyes are closed we're gonna go back to our node browser so to fix that we're gonna need two things we're gonna need a greater than and again it's a float now you're not gonna see float one in here but just go down to here value greater than and float that up here and we're also going to need a conditional conditional still lives in operators it's right here conditional value conditional and again it's going to be a float we'll put that up there so we're going to start assembling it and then we're going to go and grab the last pieces that we need so we're going to do our trigger input to our operator and here we can say when the trigger input is greater than x value this happens so now since we start the gesture the second we start to pull the trigger we can actually leave the greater than at zero if you want it to trigger further on down the line just kind of figure out where uh, you would have to kind of do that that funny business uh, to get the thing that you want you can also just take trigger and pull out here if I hold the avatar, you can see that number changes as I squeeze and release the trigger. So find out where you want it to kind of start, and you would put that in as your greater than value there. Now we're going to take this the black output on our greater than, connect it to our conditional. All right. Now, this part, I'm not much of a programmer. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. Any programmers, any Protoflux programmers can uh, correct me in the comments. But we're going to take our conditional. We're going to grab fire on false. And we're going to put a one in there. So the reason on the conditional, we're going to do a fire on false with a float input of one is because our greater than node is saying that whenever the trigger pull value uh, is higher than zero it's going to fire its condition off to the conditional and then it's the conditional is saying that on false so whenever the trigger pull is zero or less we're going to write a one to whatever values we put out here so to do that we're going to go through our armature up to our i manager in the i manager under i linear driver you're going to see eyes list. You're going to go down to zero, which is computer speak for one. You're going to grab eye closed state, and you're going to extract the drive, just like what you did with the blend shapes. Let's put that there. And then you're going to come down to one, eye closed state, drive. There. And then we're just going to hook these up 
to the conditional. So what this means is when a user is in the avatar, on their left controller, left controller, they pull their trigger. The trigger pull itself is going to smoothly drive these two blend shapes at a speed of eight until the trigger is fully pulled. At the same time, whenever the trigger pull is over zero, the trigger pull strength is over zero, it's gonna fire off to this conditional on false. So whenever the this situation is false, so trigger pull strength is zero or less, it's gonna write a one on false to these two fields here, which control the eye close state on the eye manager. It's a little heavy. <laughs> the beginning was easy. <laughs> we're good. That should be all that you need. So we're gonna go back down to smile. We're gonna hold secondary. Our whole code has been selected. We're gonna grab smile. We're gonna pack. Okay, let's look in the mirror and see if that works. All right. So I'm here in the mirror, let me zoom you in a bit, oh, that, that might be a little too much, but okay. So we can see we're sitting here, we're looking in the mirror, wait for the blink, we just blinked, we hold the trigger down, and we're going to wait just a couple seconds. Oh, we're not blinking, would you look at that? Oh. All right. So that's really all that you need to set up a simple gesture system. Um, remember to pack up your, your flux when you're done. Remember to save often. Um, and you can actually use this to create some spooky whatever Halloween it is, Halloween season. So let me show you the Halloween costume I got set up for this avatar using a combination of just stuff we've already learned. So just using stuff that we've already learned, this is still the Amerispace avatar. I've swapped out the clothes. I changed the hair using the exact same process as swapping out the clothes. I did a couple texture edits using a third party uh, like Photoshop type uh, software. Um, but we can see it here on the left hand, we've got a little, little eye close smile that we can smoothly drive between. And then if we want to be spooky, we get right up in there and ah, we got a little vampire face. Just very simple things, it's all stuff we've already done to just go from a basic avatar to Halloween, spooky, wah. Uh, I hope this is helpful. I hope that I can edit this in a way that makes sense because boy howdy did I struggle with it. But uh, that's all for now. Uh, wah, 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 wah,